Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we'll demonstrate an application of the various techniques used to measure power in three-phase AC systems. We'll examine an application with a three-watt meter method, the single-watt meter method, and the two-watt meter method. The lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with three-phase AC circuit analysis and the aforementioned power measurement techniques, as illustrated in both the single-watt meter method and the two-watt meter method lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only didn't recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. For today's exercise, we'll be making use of a 180-watt, Y-configured, three-phase AC squirrel cage induction motor. At the rated conditions, this motor will ideally produce 180 watts of usable mechanical power output in the form of a twisting force known as torque, measured in units of newton meters, and rotational speed, measured in units of RPM. Let's first examine the mechanical aspects of the motor before we examine its electrical performance. An inspection of the motor nameplate demonstrates this motor's rated speed is 1,719 RPM. An algebraic manipulation of the mechanical power formula demonstrates at the rated conditions of 180 watts, the motor will produce exactly one newton meter of torque. Using a dynamometer, a device that can load up a motor by providing a resisting counter torque of one newton meter, we can measure the electrical performance of this motor at the rated conditions. Ideally, the three watt meter method, the single watt meter method, and the two watt meter method should yield the same results. However, the implementation of these various techniques might demonstrate one technique to be easier or more flexible than the others. Let's start with the three watt meter method. Obviously the most difficult and expensive of the three methods to implement since it requires three watt meters and invasive inspection of the load in question. This being said, the three watt meter method is robust and reliable because it's suitable for balanced or unbalanced loads in either Y or delta configurations. Applied to our Y configured motor, Three watt meters directly measure the voltage across and the current through each individual winding. At the rated conditions, the voltage across each winding appears to be 120 volts and the current through it appears to be roughly one amp. Load current appears to lag load voltage by a relative 49 degrees. An application of the AC power formula demonstrates that each load is experiencing 120 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 78.7 watts is directed towards real power and approximately 90.6 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. The Y-configured motor appears to be balanced in that all three windings are drawing the same amount of current, experiencing the same relative phase shift, and experiencing the same amount of apparent, real, and reactive power. Total real power is the summation of individual real power figures. Substituting in our given values yields a total real power figure of approximately 236.2 watts. Similarly, total reactive power is the summation of individual reactive power figures. Substituting our given values yields a total reactive power figure of approximately 271.7 VARs. Given these total real and total reactive powers, we can package these as the real and imaginary components of a rectangular number and then convert it to polar form as 360 volt amperes, which yields a total apparent power figure. In summary, the 3 watt meter method is a robust and reliable technique that really lets a user know what is happening to each individual load at any point in time. This being said, it's expensive and time consuming to implement and a total overkill for a balanced load like this Y configured motor. You'll additionally note that the 3 watt meter method necessitated we directly measure voltage across each winding by digging into our 3 wire Y configuration central node. This point might not be accessible for all Y configured motors. Before we move on to discuss the single watt meter method and the two watt meter method, let's briefly discuss power factor and efficiency for the system. You'll note of the 236.2 watts of total real power supplied to this Y configured motor, 78.7 watts each winding, only 180 watts is converted to actual usable mechanical power output. This corresponds to an efficiency of 180 over 236.2, or roughly 76%. The 56.2 watts of real electrical power not directly converted by this motor into usable mechanical power is considered a loss to this system in the form of heat and or vibration. There are several ways to obtain a power factor figure. Method one, look at the motor nameplate. It's written in a box that says power factor. This particular motor's nameplate says it has a lagging power factor of 0.66. If we weren't aware of relative phase shift, we can use this pre-calculated cheat code to extract the real and reactive portions from apparent power. Method two, take the cosine of the relative phase shift between load voltage and load current or the cosine of the apparent power angle. The cosine of 49 degrees or the cosine of negative 49 degrees is roughly 0.66, our power factor figure. Method three, determine the ratio of real and apparent power. 
336.2 watts or 360 volt amperes yields 0.66, our power factor figure. Either method yields the same result. You know it because this application involves a motor, it is implied that the power factor is lagging rather than leading because current will lag voltage. Let's now examine an application of the single watt meter method. Given our load is balanced, the single watt meter method is a far easier and less expensive technique to measure power. Additionally, the single watt meter method is external to the load and necessitates no invasive inspection. The single watt meter method is appropriate only for balanced Y or balanced delta configurations. The single watt meter method measures line to line voltage and line current, where total apparent power is the line to line voltage times line current times square root three. You'll note line to line voltage for three phase AC systems is offset from line to neutral voltage by a relative 30 degrees. As such, the single watt meter method induces an artificial 30 degree offset between the voltage experienced by Y configured loads and load current and determining relative phase shift isn't as direct as previously. This being said, if a user is aware of this offset or has access to a pre-calculated power factor figure from a motor nameplate, resolving total apparent power into its real and reactive dimensions is relatively easy. At the rated conditions, the line to line voltage between L1 and L2 appears to be 208 volts and line current in line one appears to be roughly one amp. Line current appears to lag line to line voltage by a relative 79 degrees. This isn't really representative of conditions internal to the Y configured load since it includes an artificial 30 degree offset. Knowledgeable of this offset, one can say load current lags load voltage by a relative 79 minus 30 degrees or 49 degrees. This corresponds to a lagging power factor of cosine 49 degrees or 0.66 as previously. Total apparent power is line to line voltage times line current times square root three. Substituting our given values yields a total apparent power figure of 360 volt amperes as previously. Resolving this into its real and reactive components using the pre-calculated power factor figure yields a total real power figure of 236.2 watts and a total reactive power figure of 271.7 bars as previously. In summary, the single watt meter method yielded the same results for this balanced Y configured load as did the three watt meter method only it did so using one third of the equipment and is external to the system and necessitates no invasive inspection. Finally, let's examine the two watt meter method, an alternative power measurement technique that is also external to the load. This method is admittedly a little bit of an overkill since we just demonstrated the single watt meter method yields correct results. However, the single watt meter method would be suitable only for the balanced condition, whereas the two watt meter method can be used for both balanced and unbalanced loads. In this occasion, our Y configured motor would be considered a balanced load since the three watt meter method demonstrated how each load impedance was effectively identical. No watt meter one in the two watt meter method measures voltage line one with respect to line two and line current in line one. Watt meter two, however, is flip flopped and measures voltage between L3 with respect to line two and line current in line three. Taken in isolation, each watt meter's reading is total nonsense. However, when we add these readings together, we obtain total power. When the motor is at the rated conditions, watt meter one is measuring a line to line differential of 208 volts between line one with respect to line two, and a line current through line one of roughly one amp. Line current appears to lag line to line voltage by a relative 79 degrees. An application of the AC power formula demonstrates that watt meter one is measuring 208 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 39.7 watts is directed towards real power and 204.2 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. This watt meter's reading, taken in isolation, is total nonsense. When the motor is at the rated conditions, watt meter 2 is measuring a line to line differential of 208 volts between L3 with respect to L2 and a line current through line 3 of roughly 1 amp. Line current appears to lag line to line voltage by a relative 19 degrees. An application of the AC power formula demonstrates that watt meter 2 is measuring 208 volt amperes of apparent power of which 196.7 watts is directed towards real power and 67.7 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. This watt meter's reading, taken in isolation, is also total nonsense. If however we add these two watt meter readings, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 236.4 watts and a total reactive power figure of approximately 271.9 bars. Packaging these figures as the real and imaginary components of a complex number of rectangular format we can convert it to polar format as 360 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. These figures closely match those we obtained using the three watt meter method and the single watt meter method, 
the advantage being that the two watt meter method is suitable for the analysis of this three wire Y configuration of both the balanced and unbalanced condition should the need arise. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, the short lecture examined the application of the three watt meter method, the single watt meter method, and the two watt meter method to measure power for a balanced Y configured motor in a three phase AC system. We additionally reviewed mechanical power, efficiency, and power factor calculations. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.